A lot to talk about. Let me turn to Torn Ballard. He is a resident of Jackson, Mississippi. Torn, welcome to the program. Let me begin by asking what your water situation is in your home. Well, thanks for having me on today. Uh, I guess I should say, first off, I'm one of the lucky ones right now. Um, we lost a little bit of water pressure at our house earlier this week, but the faucet is still running. This morning, I was able to take a shower. Um, I will say, though, we still have to boil our water just like every other resident in the city. And this has been a reality for well over a month at this point, which is also an off and on situation going back for years as well. So why is this such a problem in Jackson, Mississippi? I know the main uh, water plant certainly had many failures. And then on top of the recent floods, it just like, had one disaster after another. But how, how does this, something like this happen in a major American city with 180,000 residents? Well, I think it comes down to literally generations of neglect, mismanagement, um, as well as just kind of a, a bad situation of a lot of residents having moved out of this city in the last decade, really the last century. Um, so many residents have left the city of Jackson at this point that the geographic area is just as large as it ever was, but there's less and less of a tax base to support an aging water system and to eventually kind of bring it up to speed. I want to uh, talk about a tweet that you posted, and it got a lot of uh, attention. You said Mississippi yeah. received $429 million last year in federal infrastructure funds, specifically for water lines and pipes. And I'm wondering what we did with all that. I think you ask a very good question, Torin. Did you ever get an answer to that question? Uh, no, not quite. Um, I guess one thing I should clarify is that um, the, you know, 400 something million dollar figure, that is going to be over the course of five years. Um, but that means that the state has already received something like 75 million at that point. Um, where that money is gone, whether that is currently sitting at the state level and waiting to be distributed to localities, or whether that's in the hands of Jackson officials at this point, I really have no idea, to be honest. Um, so, I really don't have an answer, unfortunately. And I think a lot of us are asking the same question as well. Are you getting the sense that city and local officials perhaps are on the same page, if you will, with state officials? No, they, they, they are not on the same page at all. Um, both the mayor and the governor have both held numerous press conferences over the last few days that we have been watching diligently on TV as local residents here. Um, at no point have they appeared together. Um, I think, unfortunately, state and local officials really have been very, very at odds over this issue for a long time. Um, I think both sides, the state level, the state leaders and local leaders really like to kind of blame the problem on one another. Um, and so I think that has led to kind of a lack of cooperation, um, I'm assuming probably behind the scenes, but also definitely in plain view of all residents as well. Torn, when you talk to your neighbors, friends, people in Jackson, has the situation gotten better in the last few days? And are you optimistic this problem will be solved by the end of the week, which is what we heard from Jackson Mayor? A lot of optimism from him. Well, that depends what problem we're talking about. The I'm water shortage. So you don't have to boil your water. So when you turn on the tap, clean, drinkable water comes out so you can flush the toilet and you can take a shower. Well, here's the thing. So I think that we can probably get enough water pressure for residents to be able to wash their hands, to take showers, to flush toilets. Um, I have confidence that they will be able to figure out that soon. What I don't have confidence in is that we will have safe water that we, number one, don't have to boil, and number two, doesn't have lead in it. I think that's one problem that's getting overlooked in this entire conversation, is that there is lead in the pipes throughout this entire city. We're talking at the same level as that was in Flint, Michigan. Um, and that is a whole separate ball game from what we've been talking about with water pressure and with the boil water notices. I'm not seeing any efforts from anybody to fix that problem. Wow, this is just um, unbelievable to me that something like this is happening and so many people are struggling just for clean water, something clearly a lot of us uh, take for granted. Uh, Torin Ballard, thank you for talking to us. Thank you.